Welcome everybody to the March Sew Along. This month we will be sewing the Delft Table Runner. In this video we will be showing you an example of how to stitch out block 4 as well as the construction of the table runner. However, we do suggest that you also refer back to our more detailed photographed instructions when sewing your table runner. There are four different sizes that come with this design. They are the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and the 7x7. We made our table runner using the 6x6 blocks. To begin, hoop up your stabilizer in your desired hoop size. Place a piece of batting, this will be batting one, on top of your hoop and then stitch down. Trim away the excess batting right around the perimeter of the block, being careful not to cut into any of the stitching. Place fabric A right side up on top of the hoop, covering the batting and stitch down. As you are stitching down fabric A, you can use your hands or a tool to help smooth out any imperfections in the fabric. We will now begin the embroidery process. Please refer back to the instructions where you will see a labelled diagram. Follow this diagram to work out which piece of embroidery is next in the sequence. Once all of the embroidery has been completed, remove your block from the hoop and trim the seams back to half an inch. Continue making as many blocks as you like for your table runner. Now that you have all of your blocks sewn, lay them out on your work surface in the order you would like them. Start by placing the two blocks from the first row right sides together. Match up one of the side edges and then pin together. Take your two joined blocks over to your sewing machine. You will see that there are two lines around the perimeter of the block. These lines are created from the stitch down of batting 1 and fabric A. Sew directly in between these two lines on the edge that you have pinned.
Repeat this same pinning and stitching process for the remaining rows. Now that you have all of your joined rows, move them over to your ironing board and using your iron, press the seams open from the back. You can also give the front of the blocks a good press as well. Once you have ironed open the seams, place the first two rows right sides together and join along one of the long edges with either pins or quilt clips. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two rows together along the edge that you have pinned. When we stitch blocks together, we like to keep a pin at the top end and remove the rest of the pins. As we stitch along the edge, we lift up the top layer of blocks and match up the seam stitching with the seam stitching of the blocks underneath. This is just the method that we use and find that works best for us, but please feel free to use your own method. Continue this pinning and stitching process to add the remaining rows and then with the iron, open the seams and give the blocks a good press. It is now time to add some borders. To work out the length of the borders, firstly measure one side edge of the table runner, then go ahead and cut two strips of fabric to this length and the width of your choice. Also cut two strips of batting to match. Next, we are going to secure the batting to the border fabric by using spray adhesive. Please refer back to the instructions for the alternative option. Place the table runner on top of the border fabric right sides together. Match up one of the side edges of the runner with one of the long edges of the border fabric and pin or clip together. Using your sewing machine, stitch the two together with a half inch seam. Trim back the batting in the seam you just created while being careful not to cut into any of the stitching. Repeat this same pinning and stitching process for the opposite side border. And then once the two side borders are attached, go ahead and iron them over. Using your sewing machine, top stitch the side borders to give a neat flat finish. Move your table runner over to your work surface and trim back any excess fabric and batting from the side borders, making them flush with the ends of the runner. We are now going to repeat this whole border process again for the end borders, but this time when we measure the ends to get the length, you will need to include the width of the side borders into the measurement. Using your iron, fold the borders over and give a good press.
finish the end borders off with top stitching and then if needed trimming all of the borders so they are all the same width. We are now going to add the backing to the runner. Have the backing fabric wrong side up on your work surface and then place the table runner right side up on top of the fabric. Pin the two together. To attach the backing to the runner, we will be using the stitch in the ditch method. Move the two over to the sewing machine and stitch along each horizontal and vertical seam. If you find this to be too much, simply just stitch along the border seams and down the middle of the runner. Remove all of the pins and then with a rotary cutter and ruler, trim back any excess backing fabric so it is flush with the borders of the runner. To finish off the table runner, we suggest adding binding around the perimeter. Please refer back to the instructions to find out the length and width that your binding needs to be. If you needed to cut multiple strips of fabric because your fabric wasn't long enough to begin with, we also go into detail on how to join the strips together. Now that you have your binding strip, fold it in half lengthways and wrong sides together. Iron the fold. Unfold one end of the binding strip and then cut it to a 45 degree angle. Fold that cut edge over about a quarter of an inch, lightly press with the iron and then fold that end of the binding in half again. Starting on one of the sides of the runner, match the raw edges of the binding and the chosen side of the runner together. Using a ruler, mark one inch down from the end of the strip. This is the starting point. Now, mark three inches down from the starting point. And finally, mark two inches up from the starting point. This pin will signal when to stop stitching later on. Using a quarter inch seam, stitch one inch of the open fold onto the runner and stop stitching when you reach the starting point. Then leave a three inch gap and start stitching again at the three inch mark. Stop stitching when you are about half an inch from the corner and make sure you keep your needle down. Lift the machine foot, turn the table runner and continue stitching to the corner. Lift the binding strip over and pull against that angled stitch that we just made to form a diagonal fold. Then fold the binding strip back down creating a fold at the top. Pin and start stitching again until you reach the side of the table runner that you started on, mitering the corners as you go.
Stop stitching when you get to the pin that marks the 5 inches from the starting point. Use your scissors to trim the excess binding at the 3 inch mark. Place the end of the binding fabric into the pocket created at the start of the binding process. Pin in place and continue to stitch the seam until the binding is completely sewn on. Fold back the binding and iron flat. Start at one of the corners of the runner. Fold in one side of the corner just past the stitching and iron well. You can pin along this edge to keep it in place. Fold in the other side of the corner, meeting up with the first fold, creating a nice pointed corner. You can also pin along this edge too. Repeat this ironing and pinning process for the remainder of the binding. Move over to your sewing machine and start stitching from the front of the runner. To attach the binding, use the stitch in the ditch method. If you have pinned the binding on the back correctly, when you stitch in the ditch on the front, the stitching should catch the binding fabric on the back. When you get to the corner, simply just leave your needle down, lift the machine foot and rotate the table runner. Put your machine foot down and continue stitching in this fashion until you are right around the table runner. Well done, you have now finished your Delft table runner. Thank you for participating in this month's sew along. We can't wait to see what everybody creates.